Hey, this is Malika for Evanston Live TV, the voice of the people. I am hitting the streets today, looking forward to the interview with Hecky Powell. Uh, many of you in Evanston are very, very familiar with Hecky's, uh, grew up on Hecky's. <laughs> so uh, I'll be sitting down with him and his partner, Nancy Baker, uh, who I had the opportunity to meet uh, at a function, and she was just uh, an amazing woman. And so we made it happen for this interview and uh, looking forward to it. They have a wonderful program uh, for Evanston Township High School and I can't wait for you all to hear more about it. So check this out. Baker and I am the executive director of the Evanston WE program. It's the Evanston Work Ethic program. It's a brand new nonprofit um, founded here in Evanston by Hecky Powell. And I'm Hecky Powell. <laughs> it's the sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to tell me a little bit about the WE program? I would love to. Okay. I'd love to. So the Evanston WE program was founded because we feel that um, in Evanston, at Evanston Township High School, it does a great job of, of um, getting kids through rigorous curriculum and then um, sort of prepping them for college. But what about the kids that say, I don't wanna go to college. I wanna do something that doesn't require a four-year degree. Now, Hecky and I are very pro-education, um, very much pro-post-secondary education but not everybody needs to go to a four-year college experience, which is incredibly expensive um, and not always something that everyone completes in order to become something, um, you know, to be really proud of in a career. There are so many careers out there that pay well, that are very satisfying, that provide established, um, you know, respect and, and financial stability that you just don't need to always go to a four-year college, nor do kids always want that. So, <laughs> so um, we, we looked at statistics and we found that about 120 kids a year out of about 730 kids that graduate each year from Evanston High School, about 16%, about 120, were never picked up again in any kind of post-secondary uh, registry anywhere. They weren't attending um, a college anywhere. And so you have to wonder what happens to about 120 kids a year. Then out of the 600 and some kids that do go off to college every year, the national statistics show that only about 50 to 54% will ever complete a four-year degree. So now you're looking at numbers that are about half of the kids that walk the halls of Evanston Township High School will at some point in their life decide a four-year college experience is not going to fit my life. But I think every kid walking through Evanston Township High School, if you ask them, do you want a meaningful career? Do you want to make something of yourself? They would all answer yes. So what the Evanston Work Ethic Program is doing is setting up another set of open doors for them, um, for them to walk through and to be able to say, I want to pursue a different kind of career. You know, that's either to be an electrician, work in construction, work in some type of nursing, uh, health profession, I should say, you know. So, and a lot of kids really enjoy that, want to do that. But Everson Township High School really pushed kids towards college. And as Nancy was saying, not every kid is made to go to college, nor is every kid made to go to trade school. And trade school is no less than if you go to a, a, a university. My wife has a PhD, for example, okay, and, and, and you know, I have a BA, but I bring the bacon home. 
literally. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, you know, in in segueing off of uh, what Hecky is saying, the Bureau of Labor Statistics is validating everything you're saying because they're saying by the year 2020, um, actually only about 35% of all the jobs that are created will require a four-year degree. All the other ones that are in high demand, like healthcare and culinary and cosmetology and building trades and manufacturing and high tech, they will only require a two-year degree. And that's what we're saying to kids is, Stay engaged in high school because there is a light at the end of the tunnel for you too. Even if you've decided that you don't want to be something that requires a four-year degree, stay engaged, keep your grades high, look for these opportunities, and then what we will do is introduce mentors and workshops and a paid summer apprenticeship to give you a real foot in the door to test out um, a major and a certification and an associate's degree before you ever even graduate. And then if you do decide, yes, I do want to be um, an IT support person, or I want to be a chef, or I want to be a licensed electrician, then we'll be able to have you and your mentor and the WE program help you find the best fit trade technical certification for a post-secondary education. Wow. I wish you, how long has this program been around? Oh, we, we just, just, we just started. <laughs> yeah, we just in, in fact, it, 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 it's, it's uh, six months uh, we launched it. And this is something Nancy and I have been talking about. And Nancy is the one that really put the whole structure together. Okay, I'm just the founder. But she did, she, <laughs> she <pulled off. laughs> I call her gym shoes because she mm. works. I mean, really works hard. And she put the structure together. And Nancy has a background somewhat in this in counseling. And also, she was an English teacher, mm -hmm. and she really knows how to deal deal with kids. Um, it's called tough love, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, she's yeah, she's real good at this. So, but it's been it's, it's been six months, but we, we we're looking at uh, you know continue expanding as the years go on. Right. So we'll, we're hoping to induct our first cohort within the next month. We um, just finished out getting all of our applications in. We're reviewing the applications right now, and then we will um, interview and select our first cohort of kids in the next month. And then um, we're looking to not only impact their lives, but we are meeting with and working very closely with Edison Township High School that has fully endorsed this program to say, can we change the message, even for kids that aren't in our program, can we have a different conversation of success? and to say all of those students who are um, bound for success in a four-year degree, we think you should be celebrated. But we also think that the kids who have made the decision that that isn't their path, they should also be supported and celebrated. And so um, we would like to get the word out, even to the kids that aren't directly in our program, that these other options exist. And if they're thinking about it and weighing it, that we want to be there to answer their questions and provide assistance if that's what they want. Wow, I wish this program existed when I was in high school because I was one of those kids. All of my friends were AP honor students. They were definitely academic on their way to college. And I felt like I was supposed to be on another road. I was mm -hmm. like, I just don't see me going down that road. And ETHS really didn't cater to the creative artsy kids. You know, I was in the creative writing club, I was the only black person in the creative writing club, and uh, I, they just didn't really celebrate us, you know. Right. So uh, when I went to college, it was just, I just felt like a fish out of water, like I wasn't supposed to be there, and it was a waste of time for me. So I think this is a great you probably program. Was one, you probably was one of the kids that uh, <laughs> went through, th through high school, didn't create a problem enough, and you wasn't in the AP classes, nor were you in the lower class, and you wouldn't give anybody in trouble, so you just skated right on through. Yeah, and so that's what we see a lot of kids happen mm -hmm. to a lot of kids. Mm -hmm. um, Everson Township High School is a good, good school. Mm -hmm. AP and the kids have a problem, but that kid in the middle who doesn't create a problem mm -hmm. usually get lost, and and they think they're supposed to go to college or to a university, but mm -hmm. a lot of them are not uh, meant to. I have a number of kids who have worked here who've taken up a trade and, and done very, very well. 
that's one of the reasons I, uh, I started a program like this under the Forest Hill Power Foundation is because my grandfather, mm -hmm. well, my great grandfather, I should say, who was a slave in New Madrid, Missouri, mm -hmm. and him and his mother and two other siblings escaped from there and came to Iowa, which was a free state. When they left from there, my great grandfather was married and came to Evanston. And he was here and he became a barber. And he built a house on Church Street. And back then, black people were not getting money from banks to have a home. But he worked his butt off to get his home. And it still stands today. My father the same way. Um, and because they picked up a trade, they were very successful and they didn't have to go on welfare and all these other programs that we have today. So if we could do that, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. If we could, if they could do that back then, why can't we do better? And that's why Hecky is really the founders because the Edison Work Ethic Program mm -hmm. is a. Uh, it has been launched by the Forrest E. Powell Foundation, which was founded in the name of Hecky's father, who raised nine children as a laborer, as a person who worked all around the North Shore doing different things and never took any public assistance and raised nine children. And, you know, was just a, a, a very stable, successful person in the community. And his motto was, whatever you do, be the best you can be at it. And that really launched the Forest Steve Powell Foundation 20 some years ago. And then the Forest Steve Powell Foundation is saying, how can we really codify that work ethic theme and bring it to youth instead of just giving out scholarships as they walk into their trade schools, get them earlier and really help them make the right decisions. Sort of the same philosophy that people are saying, instead of waiting until a student is graduating, talking to them about college, by then it's too late. You need to talk to kids much sooner than that. And we're saying, that whole decision-making make, pipeline should be sooner for kids deciding to go into all these other really profitable careers as well. You shouldn't wait until they've been out of school six months and are wandering lost. around and lost and you know at home or having minimum wage jobs and say, wow, you know, you were a B student, you were a C student, you were a solid kid, and you have so much potential. Do you even know how many amazing careers there are out there for you. So we're sort of pushing that um, pathway down a little bit into the middle of high school and saying, we're never gonna tell a kid, you're not college material, you are. We're gonna wait for them to self-identify. I asked Jackie Powell to describe his experience growing up in school. They were <laughs> throwing us out of school any, on any infraction or anything that we did. In fact, um, because of uh, some of this, they created night school uh, for a few of us. So we went to school in the evening. Um, you know, so, and I was in and out of, I was in and out of, I was in and out of that high school. I probably was out more than I was in because they were putting us out, but well, you let anyway. Them sit in. Uh, you yeah, let we sit let, in. let them sit in and, and 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 we lived to sit in in front of the superintendent's office. Um, we we did a lot of marches. We 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 walked out of we walked out of classes. Um, so I mean we 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 did a number of, and we changed the culture. At least we, we we were able to change the culture of the of the school. They they brought in a, uh, some counselors. They brought in a, a black uh, assistant uh, superintendent. They brought in your friend. Um, that's a story. Yeah. But um, Ron Gearing, first black English teacher. Yeah. yeah. So uh, those those things that uh, was was uh, was happening at that time. Um, um, I didn't finish high school until nineteen. I was supposed to come out in sixty seven, um, and I didn't. I went back. That was in the seventies. And I went back because of uh, my mother. And I, I wanted her to see me walk across that stage because she wanted me to get a high school diploma. That was very important to her. So I went back to school 
uh, and I cut a deal because they wouldn't gonna let me back in that Everson Township High School. I mean, they didn't want me there. So <laughs> when I tried to cut the deal, it went like this. I talked to the superintendent and, and I asked him, I said, if I can get in Oakton Community College, would you accept my, uh, my uh, credits from Oakton for Everston and, and graduate with me? And he told me, he said, well, if you can do that, if you can get into Oakton and they let you in, yeah, I'll honor that. And at that time, they were not letting high school drop out there. I went over there and I cut a deal with them. They agreed with it. I told them what the superintendent said. Got a letter from the superintendent and they agreed to it. I was the first one they allowed to ever do that. And I went and got my credits and I walked across the stage from my mother. Wow. And then I went on to uh, Northeastern University, University where I was, because I felt I needed to get a college degree. If I know what the hell I know, uh, there I go. If I know what I know today, I would have never went back to it. I would, I, I would never went to college <laughs> because I don't use any college stuff in, in this business. And I really enjoyed my business. And even when I was director of neighbors at work, uh, I, I really enjoyed that. Um, that's the only thing I would need that college to, uh, degree for was for that job. But basically, I, I probably would have never gone back. I would have really found something I really love doing, which is what I'm doing now. That so that's beautiful. my story. That is beautiful. Part of it. So you both are, are examples, mentors yourself for this program, because you realize culinary school was probably the path you should have taken. Right. Had before. I been braver, right, and done what I really wanted to do, right. And Hecky, realizing he was a businessman, but he just got the college degree just because. Well, one of the things, because that's what they were pushing, too, is that the only way you're going to be successful, you need a degree. degree. And, I, you know, I bought into it. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, I think this program is great. God, I wish it was around when I was in school. It would have saved me a lot of pain <laughs> and money. Well, you know, right. it, it's, loans. <laughs> right. it, it's good to hear you say that because it is so many people. We have talked to so many people who have bought into this program, they feel the same way that you do. And the average, the average student in America, whether they finish college and about half won't or not, are carrying debt around $25,000 a piece. And you have to ask yourself, you know, what are these poor kids doing who went two years, didn't finish, came out with a debt of $25,000, and now they're desperately trying to figure out what what a job will be that will not ruin their credit rating, get their loans paid off. Uh, it's just, it's kind of, um, the college system is sort of in a crisis right now. And we, we just want to just send a positive, calm message to as many ETHS kids as possible is that there are a lot of choices.